Spain had provided the fighters and bomber force to be flown as the Luftwaffe. And representing the Royal Air Force, every available Spitfire and Hurricane still in existence. Together, for the first time, they combined to form the 35th largest air force in the world. Spain comes into the picture. Spain gave them the use of a military airfield outside Seville and allowed her own air force of Messerschmitts and Heinkels to be painted up in German colours for the defeat of Britain. For defeat, it almost certainly must have been had Hitler and Goering listened to Field Marshal Erhard Milch. The man who was head of Lufthansa when the Nazis seized power had been asked to form the Luftwaffe and became number two to Goering. Flying over the evacuated Dunkirk beaches, Milch had a plan to win the war. Uh, Goering and uh, Schoening were together with me and I told them that it would be now the only possibility to go over, now in this moment, uh, immediately after Dunkirk, only with uh, parachutists and also with army divisions uh, and uh, to, together with uh, Stukas and then to go to the, to the British airdromes and to take, take there the gasoline and oil and so on. Goering, he had no time for this and was not interested in. It was for him uh, too dangerous, the, the idea to go to England with parachutists. Goering had the feeling that the war was over and won. He feared Hitler. Hitler. He had the feeling if he told Hitler anything against his own opinion, then he was over. Hitler was in this question much more dangerous than I believed. Perhaps otherwise I would not have been sometimes so, so, so naughty. He has been found guilty of using slave labor and of cruel experiments on POWs. His sentence, here it is. It is the sentence of this tribunal that the defendant, Erhard Milch, be confined to the Rebdorf prison for the remainder of his natural life. Milch was released 16 years later and in 1962 went back to business. Impatiently, through June and July 1940, Luftwaffe crews ringing Britain from Norway to the Bay of Biscay itched for the action Milch demanded. To keep up this eagerness, while Hitler hesitated, Milch inspected his eager crews much as Dietrich Freubus, playing the part of Milch, carried out his inspection on the film's Spanish airfield. Uh, uh. The 35th largest air force in the world had been assembled for the film. Now, it was up to the director, Guy Hamilton. When we fought the Battle of Britain, it was against invasion, which meant invasion of Britain by Nazism. And had that invasion been successful, we wouldn't have been occupied by a lot of charming Germans. We would have been occupied by Hitlerism and everything that means. The future of Europe and the whole world would have been altered. And I think that has to be stated because it's the reason that Britain fought and fought hard. Eggenauer. Dover. Dover. I realized that beyond the responsibility of making a good picture, I had the responsibility, a responsibility to history. I'm not a historian, and then I started to get nervous. Nervous and worried. The more research I did, the more people I met, the more people I interviewed, the more uh, documents I found. I began to develop feelings about the battle, points that I wanted to bring out, and I felt, am I justified in expressing my own opinion? And for about three months, I was worried, saying, is it right for a director to look at the Battle of Britain from his own personal point of view? I wrestled with this for a long time and finally felt that the answer was yes. 
that one has to take a viewpoint and one has to bend the, the scenes to illustrate the feelings that I have about the battle, to destroy the myth, only to recreate a greater myth, because it's a fantastic story. The audience in the cinemas today wouldn't be sitting there for the events that happened in a short period of about 12 weeks, 25 years ago. A first draft of script was written, then the experts were brought in to check every small accuracy of detail. Wing Commander Stanford Tuck, British fighter ace, and General Galland, his former opponent, now a close personal friend. During the war, Galland was made a general at only 30 years of age, the youngest general in Europe since Napoleon. General Gallant is in a difficult position vis-à-vis -vis the Battle of Britain because he's a most distinguished figure in Germany, and rightly so. And I think Gallant's original attitude to the whole project is that he'd rather not see the picture made at all. It's not a particularly distinguished part of German history. And Gallant said, why don't you make the picture of the last noble knights of the air the last clean fight between two air forces. There'll never be another one in the history of mankind because now it's all an electronic uh, warfare. This was gentleman to gentleman stuff in the air, to which I replied, rubbish. I insisted on historical truth, and I insisted on facts like shooting German, uh, shooting uh, Royal Air Force pilots on the parachute over England. But to the best of my knowledge and the knowledge of all people I have asked, and all people which I involved, never has happened. Well, he can't have asked Flight Lieutenant Bowery. One of my Polish officers uh, called out that he was bailing out. Almost immediately, two Messerschmitts started to attack him whilst he was on his parachute. This sort of argument went on for months. But finally, the script was agreed, and General Galland found himself in Spain. He knew it well. Over 30 years ago, he had led a German air squadron in the Spanish Civil War, a war in which many Luftwaffe pilots received, well, a kind of training. Of course, there's a funny feeling, and a lot of memories are coming back. Sometimes you believe the last uh, 20 years are coming back, or has never gone. Now? The aircraft of both sides stood ready to fight the new Battle of Britain. Jeff Hawke, a British pilot living in Miami, had his World War II American B-25 bomber converted into a flying camera platform in order to film the forthcoming air battle. The B-25 flew out of Florida, gleaming silver. They made her up and fitted her out with cameras in England. And now, as Jeff Hawke taxied her into the Spanish airport, she was ready to start filming. The plane is painted in a variety of colors so that the large formations of Heinkels, Messerschmitts, Hurricanes and Spitfires can fly in the positions needed for the four cameras. Each camera position has a closed circuit television set up with videotape recording for instant replay. As you can see, the camera in the tail is completely open to the elements, so the cameraman has to, well, be well strapped in. Taking her up on a trial run, pilot Jeff Hawke puts her through her paces. It's fun to fly this aircraft. It's been lightened and strengthened considerably for the filming and behaves a lot more like a fighter than a bomber, which it was originally designed for. Funny looking sombreros, all the way from Texas. Four Texans, pilots in the privately formed Confederate Air Force, found themselves in Spain. We bought four Messerschmitts in Spain and a uh, Spitfire in England. And uh, before we had time to take them home, we heard about this movie. And they needed both Messerschmitts and Spitfires, so we just leased them to the movie company. And in order for them to lease our airplanes, we uh, made a provision that we fly them. Leading the American and Spanish pilots in the film, is Comandante Santa Cruz, Spain's chief test pilot, who during the war flew with the Spanish Blue Squadron alongside the Luftwaffe and against the Russians. The double sheet will come back and then you will be able to make the normal formation with the change. Right. Okay. Ready? Go. 